Hi everyone, my name is Rishika Rajdan from BTEC CSIT branch from Dronachari group of institution Greater Noda. Like to present seminar on Equa Communication. The contents of seminar include introduction, necessity of Equa Communication, Practice influencing aqua communication, architecture, application, limitations, and references. Introduction Underwater wireless communication is a wireless communication in which acoustic waves carry digital information through a channel. They are using acoustic waves rather than the electromagnetic waves because acoustic waves carry the single base solution for communicating underwater. Most commonly, they are employed using hydrophone. The electromagnetic waves are not used to propagate over the short distances. Heavy cables were used to establish high speed communication. The propagation of speed in water is 1500 meter per second. So let's talk about why there is a need of aqua communication. So the thing is wired communication. It is not possible in every scenario. Sometimes, there could be a breaking of wires. The cost plays a significant role and over long distance latency can happen. Now, let's see some factors influencing aqua communication. Firstly, part loss. Path loss is a reduction in power density and it is a major component in analysis and design of telecommunication system. Second, noise. Noise are the unwanted sound. There are two types of noise. Man-made noise and ambient noise. Man-made noise are the power line and ignition system. Second, ambient noise is also known as background noise. It is a sound noise under the tender sound being monitored. It is a form of noise pollution or interface. Third, multipath propagation. Result in a radio signal receiving the antenna from two or more part. High propagation delay. Propagation delay means the amount of time it takes to head of the signal to travel from the sender to receiver. As it is a high propagation delay, it rises in a time. Architecture. The static two dimension underwater acoustic sensor network for ocean water monitoring. A group of sensor nodes are anchored to a bottom of an ocean. Underwater sensor nodes are interconnected to one or more underwater gateways by the means of wireless acoustic link. To achieve this objective, they are equipped by the two acoustic transducers, namely vertical and horizontal. The horizontal transducer is used by the underwater gateway to communicate with a sensor node in order to send commands and configuration data to the sensor. Secondly, Collect monitor data 
The vertical link is used by the underwater gateways to relate data to a surface station. The sensors can be connected to the underwater gateway via direct links. The second architecture is the static three dimension underwater acoustic sensor network for ocean column monitoring. The three dimension underwater network are used to detect and observe phenomena that cannot be adequately observed by the means of ocean bottom sensor node. That is, to perform cooperative sampling of a 3D ocean environment. In three-dimensional underwater network, the sensor node floats at different depths to observe the phenomena. The one possible solution is to attach each underwater sensor node to a surface by the means of wire whose length can be regulated to adjust the depth of each sensor node. However, the floating surface may obstruct ship navigating on a surfaces or they can easily be detected and deactivated by the enemies in a military setting. The third architecture is three-dimensional network of autonomous underwater vehicles, that is, AUV. AUV can function without cables or remote control and therefore they have a multitude of applications in oceanography, environment monitoring and underwater resources studies. The feasibility of relatively inexpensive AUV submarine equipped with a multiple underwater sensor that can be reached any depth in the ocean. The integration of underwater acoustic sensor network with AUV require new network coordination algorithm such as adaptive sampling and safe configuration. Adaptive sampling include control strategy to command the mobile vehicle to the place where the data will be most useful. For example, the density of sensor node can be adaptively increased in a given area when a higher sampling rate is needed for given monitoring phenomenon. Self-configuration It includes control procedure to automatically detect connectivity holes due to fail node failure or channels. AUV can either be used for install, uh, installation and maintenance of a sensor network infrastructure or to deploy a new sensor. Now we can see some application. First, Seismic monitoring. It is used to detect and locate underground nuclear explosion. Second, pollution monitoring. It is an exercise to measure ambient air pollution in the area. Third, ocean current monitoring. It is a continuous direct movement of a sea water generated by the number of focus acting upon the water including wind, temperature, etc. Fourth, Equipment Monitoring and Control Equipment monitoring is a fundamental part of a sport and include the rules that governs the boat. Fifth, Autonomous Underwater Vehicles AUV AUV can be used for the underwater survey mission such as detecting and mapping submerged obstruction that can be a hazard 
to navigate for a commercial vessel. Last, not the least, remote operator vehicles (ROV). The difference between AUV and ROV is that AUV operates independently from the ship and has no connection cable, whereas ROV, that is, remotely operated vehicles, converted to operator on a ship. Now we see some positive impact of aqua communication. Firstly, it is a good performance against multi-part losses. Secondly, it has the ability to overcome frequency fading. Fading is a variation of attenuation of a signal with various variables. These variables include time, geometric position, and radio frequency. Third and then lastly, it has an efficient high frequency band. Now we see some drawbacks of aqua communication. Firstly, the battery power is limited and the, it cannot be free charged. Secondly, the bandwidth is limited. Bandwidth is the amount of data that can be transferred from one point to another within a network in a specific amount of time. It is major in bits per second. Third, they are prone to failure because of fouling and corrosion, etc. Fourth, it is highly affected by the environment and nature factors. These are the some references which help me to make a seminar on aqua communication. Thank you everyone and have a nice day ahead.